Hey everyone, my name is Robin and as you probably know, I care a lot about design and user interface in Power Apps Canvas apps. I was really nervous and excited when I read that Microsoft is giving another go in refreshing the classic controls we have in Canvas apps. If you want to keep yourself updated what is coming in the next week and months, to the Power Platform, you should definitely check out this page right here. I'm going to link it up here and down in the description. And there we saw it, modern user experience built Canvas apps by using new and refreshed controls. Really quickly, let's take a look at a blog post that has some important details about them because they are just in preview right now. That means they are not quite there yet, but we can look at them. So let's uh, take a look at what we can expect when they are ready. They will be modern. That means using Microsoft's fluent UI design system. They will be faster than the classic controls. They will be more accessible. And this is by far the most important point for me. Theming will be available. So let's take a quick look down here. And that means we can style them per control, a whole new theming system. Don't really know what we can expect from that, but uh, I take you through my vision, what that will look like. Um, we will have more controls. So this is just a first preview and the first controls that are available. So they will be more. So let's hop into our app and look how we can enable them. It's also down here. And of course, I will link this down here, up here. I used my material design template app for that. Let's head to the settings, upcoming features, and then we type in a modern controls, switch that to on, and we should be good to go. And we see the modern controls down here. And I already prepared a tiny little bit because we want to compare them to the classic controls and to the Dataverse for Teams controls. So uh, if you want to compare them, I just have these categories so we don't mix them up and see which is which. Let's dive right into it. Let's go to the first one, to the modern controls, and let's look at the button. So this is the button. Let's take a classic button next to it. This is with our template. Let's move this over here and look at them side by side. So the nice thing is that this now works. So we can choose between secondary and primary. But what doesn't work yet is um, there's no theming whatsoever right now the type is the only thing that we can change um, so we can't make the font size bigger or change different font or use a, a different color and this will be for all the controls but as i showed you in the blog post um, this will be exciting theming will be coming so of course we will have some uh, kind of ways to manipulate them but let's take a quick look first how this uh, looks like in the preview. Well, nothing spectacular, spectacular right now. What is nice that this works, this is the Dataverse for Teams control out of the box. Yeah, and here this is a little bit different. And I think the out of the box experience of the new one is a little bit better to the next one. We will look at the checkbox. And I think this is not too spectacular. I hit the alt key, so I'm in instant preview. What is a little bit strange that the checkbox moves a few pixels down when I check it. So yeah, let's see. Let's hope that that changes, but looks okay in my opinion the check could i think it's not really centered right now could be a few pixels down and probably a little bit bigger let's go to the drop down drop down of course a really important control 
let's look at what is available and we see um, that these are PCF controls, just like the Dataverse for Teams controls, which means uh, we have to add the fields manually that we want to use right here. So yeah, let's take a quick look. And this looks quite different than the normal one. First of all, it only shows a subset. There are 5,000 um, 5, items in the collection and it only shows around 25. So that is not that much. But what I do really like, oh, this also works without hitting the Alt key. Ah, okay. Uh, what I really like are the rounded edges right here. You can probably see it. And here are also the rounded edges. Let's compare to the classic one and let's compare to the, oh, this is funny. Yeah, small bug right there. I think that will be fixed in the next iteration. So uh, let's use the normal dropdown. Of course, not uh, the complete standard look, but uh, properties changed based on our uh, material design template. And let's really quickly get in a Dataverse for Teams one. This is this right here. This also has rounded edges. And yeah, there you see it's far more, but also not all, probably 100 right here. But what I really like right here is this uh, small effect down there. So let's do it once again. The highlighting line underneath is coming to life. Yeah, really like it. So I, I like the out of the box styling a little bit more than the Dataverse for Teams one. Let's look at the next controller. Um, this is an info button. And this is actually pretty cool. Could I please move the info button? Yes, I can. So um, we didn't have this control before. And I really, really like it because this shows a little text bubble where you can put additional information text. And as the blog post stated, oh, need to move to 100%, I think. So yeah, and as the blog post stated, this is accessible means that I now can navigate with my keys. So just with the keyboard and it's not on hover. Like when I hover over it, nothing happens. But when I hit the enter key or when I click on it, then we got to see the information text right here. So uh, I think really nice touch, really nice feature. And this comes in different sizes, I think. Yeah, you can make it a little bit larger. Let's see what the final theming options will be. Let's head to the next one. This is the link. Yeah, this is just a link. Don't know if we needed that. The next little bit more exciting one, I've built a lot of these with classic controls. Like um, the way I did this was placing two boxes, uh, two rectangles on top of each other or two buttons on top of each other if I wanted it 
with rounded edges, or I've also built these using SVG code, but this is of course a lot easier. We can choose between round and square. Yeah, you probably see it a little bit. So the edges will be round or square. Um, we can make it a little bit thicker. Let's go back to the rounded edges. And what I really like is it's also got a small animation to it. So if I set that to 10, then it, yeah, with an animation goes back and forth. So a really nice small touches that I already like about these controls. Let's look at the next one, which will be a loading spinner. And it's the Fluent UI loading spinner that you probably already know from a few different products. So um, this will come at the moment, moment with a white background. I would probably prefer a transparent background or of course um, one that you can set yourself. But uh, as I said, no theming right now. Let's see where we will end up with. And we can also put a text in here and can choose where the text will be. Probably will would choose something like this. And we can choose a larger spinner. Yeah, <laughs> the difference is not too big. But having this uh, nice little loading animation, I've built yeah, a few loading spinners in my life and it's nice to have something like this out of the box. And hopefully we can adjust the colors with the theming options that will be available. Let's look at the next control, which will be a tab list. And let's really quickly build some items. Item one item two, and then we will build something with a longer text, item three. And again, we have to add the value right here. And yeah, as you can see, this has no effect whatsoever. What, uh, how, how big you can, how big you will make it. We can choose the render size if it's a little bit bigger or smaller. And we can also choose if it's horizontal or vertical. What is missing right now is that you can set uh, what you want to be the first item. So um, right now nothing is selected, but normally when you come to a page um, or to a screen, you want to be normally the, the first item to be selected. And sometimes you want an automatic change. So when you enter a value in the last field or hit a button, then you want to change to the next tab. And this is not in there right now. But what I also like is the animation. So the item gets uh, bold and the little bar in the front will move with a smooth animation. Really, really like it. I have a video where I built something like this for a horizontal menu, and it's very, very complicated to do this with the classic controls. And here we have it right out of the box. I really like it. And of course, this is also responsive. Um, as you saw, this rectangle right here matches the width of the text and the item width matches the length of the text. So this is like the modern Fluent UI tabs work. And yeah, really nice new out of the box functionality. Built a few of those uh, during my Power Apps life. So this will make life a little bit easier and looking good so far. And then we have two basic ones left, the text and the text input. And I think this is just a label. Okay, so this is not too spectacular. 
the font size can be changed right here, but uh, in 10 levels from 100 to 1000. Not quite sure what to expect from that. So let's look at the next control and last control, and this is the text input. And let's, I want to see if it will match the, the box right here. Yes, we have the same, um, the same edges and of course the same background color and the same effect with the bar below. So these should go really well together and I like the look. And we have some options here. Yeah, come on. We have some options uh, in this control so far. We have we can choose between single or multi-line. So we have this required property in a few controls as well in the in the drop down and probably in the no in the checkbox we don't have it probably when it's used inside of a form but right now this has no effect whatsoever please let me know in the comments what do you think about the new modern controls uh, what do you think microsoft needs to to work on and what control is missing in your opinion love to hear from you see you next time bye bye